Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of Honori's Penny Arcade. Usually I do these um, live with the text chat at the bottom and my Discord up and running, uh, but this is a little different. This is, um, yeah, this is a special edition, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a few minutes of Ed Finley's uh, Castlevania II Rebitten, his reimagining of a game that had what was basically the equivalent of bad editing in Hollywood. Um, you may have noticed the original game had a lot of dead ends and just stuff that didn't need to be used and um, you know if you're familiar with the last level it felt very incomplete and he took it upon himself to create this which I think is frankly brilliant. Uh, if you are a retro 8-bit gamer, or if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, this is definitely for you. So, let's go ahead and dive in, and I'll talk about this a little bit. Um, I'm using a, um, Sabertooth, a Razer Sabertooth controller, so you can use keyboard if you want. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this a little bit. Uh, just a little bit of, bit of background information. Uh, Retro Gamer 3 is his usual like YouTube name and website, but um, when he makes these recreations of past games, there's they're always incredibly difficult. Like if you were a little kid playing this back in the day, you would have a very hard time. So I do like how much more challenging it is. Um, you're going to notice a lot of differences of this game compared to the original. For instance, you don't have the uh, item selection menu like you used to, but you don't need it. Uh, he's basically utilized all the buttons uh, on your controller, so you don't have to have any like special selection options or whatnot. So I played a couple of minutes of this before, and um, essentially... I've got a, a general understanding of like the first maybe 20 minutes. So right now what I'm doing is I'm looking for a timepiece, which is something he added so that way you can tell the difference between the day and night cycles, which is a must have. There it is. No, that's the whip. There it is. So I think the reason he added that money bag up at the top was so you can go ahead and get this early on. And basically to buy something, you just walk over to it, and as soon as you touch it, it deducts the money for you automatically. So one of the other things in Castlevania that you didn't have before was the money didn't have a purpose. It would just give you score. Now the money actually is money, and the hearts are only for the items, the usable items. The other thing you're going to notice is he has utilized soundtracks from every Castlevania past, which is brilliant. I love every bit of this so far. And uh, during the development, he was taking in like user submissions for suggestions and add-ons and things. And I'm proud to say that I actually had a small little hand in this. So I guess I'll describe it when the nighttime happens. But basically, the day and night cycle was something that he couldn't re-emulate. And frankly, it was very clunky originally anyway. So the new uh, day and night cycle, which I'm about halfway through the day, is um, automatic, and it just fades in, which is a bit more realistic, I think. The other thing is, is he made the monsters a lot harder to kill. <laughs> and then one other thing you might notice is I got this, uh, you can switch the weapons back and forth. So in case you accidentally picked up a weapon you didn't want, it drops the old one and gives you a few seconds to decide, do I want the axe, do I want the dagger, whatever. Which I think is great, because one of the most annoying things is when you're jumping and you, you know, strike an item, and then it turns out to be something you didn't want, and you were stuck with it. So this is much better, I think. So here's the night cycle, which is great, it just fades in, and essentially what you have is very limited view. Um, I'm kind of glad that you can still see the outside edges a bit, but I do like the fact that it's a little shadier. Um, I'm not sure if I would have preferred it to be totally blacked out, but, I mean, it still has to be playable to, like, even the, the most basic gamers, so I think I understand why you went this way.
Oh, the other thing that makes this game differ from the original is you have one life. One, that's it. If you fall in that water, you get to start all over. Which sounds terrible at first, but if you see the way he set up the, um, the save system, then you'll understand why he went this way. The other thing you're going to notice if I ever stop using my, my throwing knives is the number of hearts you're allowed to carry is limited to your level, essentially. So, at first, the maximum you can carry is only 10 hearts. Which means you can only throw 10 items at a time. Which is sort of a balancing uh, feature, I think. Like, I'm okay with that. The other thing he added, which you're, which I'm showing you right now, is the fact that back in the back in the original, if you jumped, you were fully committed to that jump. You couldn't stop it. So if you jumped and you overshot it and you hit the water, you died. In this, you can actually control your descent just by changing direction, which is really good. I'm not very good at this. I may actually die before I get to the bottom. <laughs> so, like the original game, uh, you can get the Thorn Whip if you want it. Every time I played Castlevania 2 growing up, I never wanted the Thorn Whip. I thought it was a waste of money. So what I usually do is I go to the next town over, and uh, I go straight to the Chain Whip, which he has left the Chain Whip in the same town, if you remember the original game, which is this one here. So let's do let's show you the save feature. So the priest in the past, you would just go up there and he would recharge your health, and that was the end of it. Now he recharges your health and he allows you to save the game. So now if I jump in the water and die, I'll go ahead and show you this. So, say I jump in the water and die. Oops. Game over, right? Well, now we're back to the load screen, and I can load my game that I just saved. And you're right back to where you left off. So I think that's a pretty good feature. Um, the only difficulty uh, about this is, if you die in a mansion, you have to start back at whatever place you saved at last. So, save often. It promotes you saving often. Now, I'm in this town for a reason. I want the chain whip, but I can't afford it yet. And if I'm not mistaken, it's up here. Let me go ahead and see if I can find it real quick. This guy's going to tip you off. Right? So that usually tells you to come over here and check the walls. And then this guy tells you that he'll sell you the whip. But I don't have enough money. So, when I first played this about an hour ago, I got to here and I'm like, well, I really don't want to backtrack yet because if I die, I lose everything, even though I would saved or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here in town and let the night cycle kick in. And another really cool feature is the town gets shuttered, just like during the regular day and night cycle. But it happens in real time, which is great. Like, everyone just clears the streets and all the doors slam shut. So that little, there it is, the little dial up at the top right corner of my uh, status, that's obviously the watch that I bought. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk around town and try to collect the money I'm short. Thankfully, like the original, if you just walk back and forth, these things do respawn. So we'll just walk back and forth. One thing I kind of wish, though, was the um, the night cycle's a bit fast. Like, I think it's uh, one-third, or two-thirds, one-thirds. So I think that the day cycle's about two-thirds the time it takes, and then the night cycle's one-third, the remaining third. Because it just seems like the nighttime ends a lot faster. Which, I mean, okay, if you're in the summer solstice, the days are the longest and the nights are the shortest, right? So if we assume that, then I guess that makes sense. 
But uh, this is the easiest way to come up with cash uh, without, you know, risking killing yourself or taking, like, a massive amount of damage. Because to the right, that's when things get pretty difficult. So the magic number is... Ah, oh, I missed it. Okay, so the magic number is 1,500, so I'm still not there. So what I'll probably do is I'll go in here, I'll save the game again, so I don't lose my progress of, of income. I originally saved on save 2 for this playthrough, but I had a save in save 1, which was just after I bought the whip, so I'm not really that far behind. Now I just need to cough up another 100 bucks. If I remember right, those are the zombies from Castlevania 3. I just, I love the integration of everything that you remember from your childhood playing the series. It's, it's the best. It's absolutely the best. So right now I'm playing it safe. I'm just sticking around the town that I want to buy the item from. Um, I... I don't think I need the daggers right now. That uh, There's something in that town that I haven't showed you. There's a wall that requires... Uh, there's the money. There's a wall that requires the holy water. So I'm going to go ahead and take it now. Let's see, I got the money, so let's go ahead and get the whip. there's a mechanic that there was just unavoidable, but it would have been great to be able to jump off of the stairs, but it's probably like a layering thing, or it wouldn't be allowed. And it sort of gives you that retro feel anyway. I just got to remember to be more prudent about it. Okay, let's see if I can make it before night. So now we're going to go over here. So this guy tells you what he's selling you, right? But then you can go and buy it. Automatically eclipse. And then he'll change what he's saying. He'll tell you something else. So make sure you talk to everybody you can. When I first started this up, I thought... Um, Oh, hey, I can't talk to the townspeople. Like, maybe there's a button I don't know about, but there isn't. If they have dialogue, it'll give you the little notification that there's dialogue. So this is basically where I, where I was uh, before I started recording. So everything at this point from now on is going to be uncharted territory for me. What I want to do is I want to get through this night, recharge my health, save the game again, and um, I can't head to Berkeley Mansion yet. I went there in my first play, and um, there's a moving block that I can't see. So I think, I could be mistaken, but I think he rearrange the order that you actually have to do the mansions in but don't quote me on that I mean I'm I'm just new to this right now as you know view if you can go download it I mean this is literally a one day old game it was released yesterday plus stockpiling a little cash isn't such a bad idea There is... Let's go, let's go find the wall with the, uh, the holy water. I think it's the first one. Alright. Healed and saved. So 
So one feature that he added to this game was certain walls will require certain weapons. So I can't chain through this, obviously, but it tells you the symbol of what you need to use, which is nice. And now this guy wants to sell me a torch, and what the torch does is it makes your night cycle view larger. So the, the circle around you is a little bit wider. There's a little part of me that kind of wish that if we were going to have a wider view like that, that everything outside of the view should have been just pitch black. But, and again, it's a difficulty thing. I mean, there's plenty of difficulty already added. I doubt I'll find the mansion that I want to go into uh, that has the feature, so I'll just go ahead and tell you. Basically, um, when I saw the night cycle, I got really excited uh, for his solution on how to make it work. And, you know, when I was a little kid playing this game, one of the coolest things that I thought could be added was if you look inside a mansion in this game, there's not very many candles or torches or anything like that. So, you would imagine that if there was a castle or a, or a mansion that had no lighting, then it should be pitch black on the inside. So I just threw the idea to him, thinking that, you know, it might be too late for him to add features to the game, because he was already pretty far in. And he was like, no, that's brilliant, we're gonna do that. And so he made one of the mansions of this game pitch black, and you have to have the torch. And the really cool effect, which I can't remember if he did it or not, but there's thunder and lightning happening out in the, in, the, in the windows. So as you walk by the windows, thunder and lightning gives you a brief glimpse of what's around you, which would scare the living hell out of you, to be honest. So yeah, there's, there's a mansion in this game where it's pitch black and you can't see what's coming unless you have Dracula's eye, or a torch, or you just have the limited view. Which I think is brilliant. And if I'm right about the Berkeley Mansion thing not being the first mansion you have to go through, then he set it up so you don't just get the eye immediately and then not have to worry about it. The Dark Mansion is somewhere else, because the first mansion I walk to, Berkeley, you can't do anything with it yet. There's no... There's no way to get up to the to the first area. You just walk in and you just see the water in front of you. So I'm thinking that there's something going on. Now what you're seeing here is not a trick of the imagination. This flickering is actually the, um, the torch being used. It's automatic too. And you notice that the view got a lot larger too. So I don't know what I'm doing right now, like where I'm headed. I haven't done this yet. All right, so there's another town here. Um, I don't know, let's just hang out here, I guess, and then we'll, we'll check the town. I will leave a link in the description below where you can download this, and you absolutely should. This is like a must have for any retro game collection. I mean, I still play the original Castlevania 2 from time to time. If I remember right, this is the town where you trade your original white crystal for a blue one. There we go. So, no, they're not these guys don't have anything to say. If you don't see the little prompt like this, they have nothing to say. Yeah, so this is the place where you get the blue crystal. So another great feature is, is if you grew up in the 80s and 90s like I did, um, you probably spent many a day or weekend or time after school either at your house with your friends over or your friends over at your house. 
and one of you would be playing the game, and the other one would be sitting there watching you play the game. I mean, we are of that generation, which is why streaming today is what it is, because obviously we grew up totally okay with the idea of watching someone else play the game. Um, really unique feature in this game is, is you can get a companion, and if you have a second player, your second player can play the companion. Which I think is fantastic. I was going to throw out a suggestion about different companions, because I always remembered in Castlevania 3 you had uh, Grant and Alucard and the Mage, but that would have probably added a lot more coding time. And what he did add was brilliant, so it's usable, it's functional, if you're playing by yourself, you can still get by. You can control the bat, or I think the bat was automatic, I can't remember. Ooh, I can't reach that. Wait. Okay. So I can't hit them with the whip, which is nice, because it, makes, it forces you to use your items. I really like that. I like the fact that you're constantly forced to use things that you probably didn't have to use before in other games. Or in the other game, rather. So I took the crystal instead of the holy water because, number one, I know where the holy water always spawns. We passed it earlier. And number two, there was a block back this way that required a crystal to break. So let's go find it. Oh wait, it's back down here. And I'll probably have to do it at night time. Throw it down? No. There we go. Free money is always good. Oops. <laughs> I don't think this is how I got here. This is just an impressions uh, playthrough anyway. Oh no, I'm, I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, this is definitely not the way I came. to where I was going. Yeah. If I remember right, that sphere gives you extra life. I would need a dagger to get, but I don't have a dagger because I wanted to keep this crystal to reach a certain spot on this map, I believe. Yeah, right there. Because money. I've been at this 24 minutes. Let me go ahead and start working my way to so work my way to a save, especially since I'm about to die. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, really? There we go. Oh, let me get to town. Whew. Yeah, losing this much money would probably be upsetting.
Alright, all saved up. Let's go take a look at Berkeley one more time, just to show you that, that the mansions are still in the same places, as far as I can tell. But I still suspect that the order that you go to them is going to be different. That's why we save, right? So let's <laughs> load our save and try that again. Welcome to Berkeley Mansion. So, if you remember the original game, there's a block that moves up and down right in front of where I'm standing, and it's not there. So what I suspect is, is you're not supposed to be here yet. Which is great, because that makes you have to do the mansions in a non-original order. See, the other difference of this game between this and the original is the original required you to beat the game in certain amounts of time to get certain types of endings. And I don't think that's the case in this one, so you can take your time. Otherwise, it would be a lot more linear to be able to get the game done in the time it gives you. So, I don't think the timer for the different endings is in this game, which is good, because now you can be thorough if you're a completionist type. So anyway, um, oh, I need daggers, that's right, because I want to talk to that guy. So now I have to find daggers. Yeah. Alright, so another thing is, is he likes to make it where you have to backtrack a lot, if I'm if not mistaken. I think he said that in one of his uh, other videos, which stretches out the game. But it's not like you're doing it because he doesn't have stuff for you to do. It's just having to backtrack forces you to, I guess, be cognizant of what you're doing and what sequence and what map you're on or where you're headed. So I need a dagger. So I gotta walk back to the beginning to get the dagger. Stacks too. Should probably be more mindful. I've got this kind of money on me now.
Wow. This is Castlevania 2 Rebitten. If you enjoyed it, I'll leave a link in the description below, and you can get it and play it yourself. Ed, you have created something brilliant, and I thank you for it. Anyway, um, if you like what you saw, uh, this is part of what I do on my channel. You can just kind of browse around and see what else I do. Um, but if you found me through the game and you just want to do that, that's cool too. I keep these in different playlists. So um, if you like what you saw, just hit the old like button um, and subscribe if you like what you see. Um, but I guess that's going to do it for me for now. And I hope you enjoyed what you saw. And we'll see you next time. Later.